What makes a good anime? This is something that you have to think about if you're in my position for any length of time. Is it purely the story? Is it relatable characters? Could it be the animation, regardless of when it was actually made? Or is it a combination of all of these things? Yeah, I don't think so. Thankfully, it is also very subjective, which means I can say things like that, and then people can disagree. Now, there are many ways that you can tell whether or not an anime is actually good. Some of them you can tell without even having seen the show yet. One of my favorites of which is when you have a show that is six years old, but it was so good when it was released that people are still talking about it now. And they talk about it almost as if nothing good has come since. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion. Let's jam. Not to make you think that everything can be fine and dandy, the story of Code Geass begins in the totalitarian-run alternate history country of Area 11, formerly known as Japan, before a brutal defeat in a war at the hands of the Holy Britannian Empire. Our main character, Lelouch, was once a prince, 14th in line to the crown of the Empire, before the assassination of his mother and thereafter disownment by his father left him and his sister going into hiding at a Britannian school somewhere in Area 11. With no obvious recourse against his father, the Emperor Lelouch is content to live his life in hiding. That is, of course, until he accidentally gets involved with a terrorist plot that leads him to meet the mysterious woman, CC, who gives him the power of Gios. This new power allows him to speak one command and have anyone he makes eye contact with obey him. He then uses this ability to launch the aforementioned rebellion using his newly crafted identity of the Masked Man Zero. What makes the story of Code Geass great is how the main plotline continually builds upon itself with each new episode. It's a show that has, like, mini cliffhangers that make you really want to come back next week and watch what happens next. It's just this feeling of excitement. you just like, YES! Maybe not that excited, but y you get my point. Geass also feels very much like a thriller series. You can see similarities to other shows like Death Note, where everything feels like one giant chess game. Thing is, you never know who the other player is, and every once in a while the table will be flipped. And when all is said and done and the pieces are back on the board, you look at it and realize that the tables have turned drastically. Our main character is, of course, Lelouch V. Britannia! And yes, you have to speak his name like it's always written in all caps. Why? Because Lelouch is one big giant ham. Like, I could be pretty bad, like, <laughs> like, like, real talk, real talk. I, I could be pretty horrible. But when Lelouch starts talking about his amazing plans with wide sweeping arm motions and a big booming voice, yeah, I just, I can't hold a candle to that. So after obtaining a superpower that allows him to temporarily mind control people for a single purpose, and then using it to start a rebellion, what do you think his goal is? Well, actually, the basics of his goal are fairly simple. He wants world peace. Specifically, though, he wants a world in which his blind sister can live in peace without fear of the Britannian government forcing them into hiding. Now, like other shows where they give the protagonist a superpower and task him with changing the world, Lelouch does so with the best of intentions. However, his methods are executed under the belief that the ends justify the means. Now, while he does his best to avoid civilian casualties, especially as the show continues on, he is very much not against either killing or using his Gios on any singular person that happens to be directly in his way. And this is, of course, his major problem. A problem that continually bites him in the ass all the way to the end of the show. As his actions have consequences, and you can even feel them 24 episodes later at the end of the second season. Now, his companions and enemies vary drastically, mainly because there are a lot of them. You have the very well-endowed ace pilot Karen, the I'm so freaking mysterious, pay attention to me and feed me pizza, CC, and various members of the Britannian royal family that all come with their own increasingly insane psychological traits. Of course, because it's not always serious, and Lelouch had the misfortune of choosing a Japanese high school as his hideout, there is of course the ragtag band of student council members that consist of the idiot, the extremely happy one, and the quiet batshit insane girl. Of course, I am dancing around mentioning one particular character. Uh, Suzaku is Lelouch's friend. And of course, I have the word friend in massive air quotes. They both share childhood memories, but after being separated for a very long time and then finally reunited, they find that while they would both very much like the Britannian government to not rule with an iron fist, 
They both have very different ways of trying to change things. Suzaku, with his very much lawful good mindset, feels that he can change Britannia by joining its military and somehow changing it from the inside, without realizing that this puts him in direct confrontation with Lelouch's rebellion persona, Zero. My problem with him is not his mindset, because it is a very noble mindset. I can appreciate that, but his actions don't always fall under that mindset, and he always tries to rationalize them like they were the right thing to do. In other words, he and Lelouch are doing the exact same thing, except Suzaku pretends that he is morally right for doing them, and then he criticizes Lelouch for doing the exact same thing. Oh, and there's also, <laughs> there's, there's also this. The animation is not the interesting thing here, because A, it's Sunrise, and B, it's Max. Like, they made Gundam. There's a particular level of quality that, of course, they meet. But the thing you should have noticed by now is the show's rather unique art style. It's actually not unique, as I can point out several shows that all have the same Jack Skellington character designs. But all of these shows are rather unique to a particular group known as Clamp, the creators of Tsubasa, Holic Chobits, and Cardcaptor Sakura. What I found interesting with their involvement in Code Geass is that, to my knowledge, they had absolutely no input in the story of Code Geass, unlike everything else they've ever been involved with. Granted, that's probably because unlike everything else they've ever been involved with, they did not write the original manga. Surprisingly though, the designs do fit the world of Gyas rather nicely. The music was done by Kotaro Nakagawa. He is a composer that has done the music for two shows that I have reviewed previously, Gosik and Planetes. What I like about his work is that I can really appreciate just how well he is able to keep up with the pace of the plot and the bombastic nature of the characters. He's made tracks that make randomly and possibly stupid situations sound epic. For example, for breakfast tomorrow, should I have toast or oatmeal? The dub, however... <sighs> you see, this is where my normal dub problem comes into play. See, I originally watched Code Geass in Japanese back when it aired in Japan, like a number of years back, and it's only recently that I've been able to actually sit down and watch the dub. But every time I try to, it just doesn't feel like the same show. John Young Bosch is a great voice actor, but he doesn't have the same amount of ham that Jun Fukuyama has. Hell, I think the only other person in existence that could have done justice to Lelouch is Mamoru Miyano. The thing is, he is also Japanese so that doesn't really help our dub problem. Overall, the dub is passable, but there are times when I really feel like they don't nail the tone of the show like they should. Like, I'm not against the dub, and it's not on my short list of dubs I absolutely refuse to listen to, but if given the choice, Japanese all the way. Finally, it comes down to the very simple question of, will I give this show my recommendation? And it is not without its flaws. The character designs, while beautiful, are uh, rather unique, and that might turn off some people. The characters can range from brilliant to, oh my god, how did you even learn to breathe? And of course, because of the existence of some mystical magical power, the overall realism of the show is non-existent, though granted, the mechs don't help that either. Because of this, though, the writers can just hand wave away complicated situations and likewise seemingly make things up as they go, all for the sake of drama. But at the end of the day, what you have is a series that is worth talking about, and we're still doing it. Granted, that may be in part because of its rather beautiful ending. But I digress. It is something that is definitely worth watching. And so, with all that in mind, I have meticulous- All hail Lelouch Vibertrania! 10 out of 10! Buy it now! Buy it now! Buy it now! <laughs> yeah, no. It's not that good. However, it is still worth a very reputable 8.28 out of 10, and because I don't throw the buy it rating around lightly, we will leave that there, as it really does deserve a place on your shelf if you have something like that anyways. At the time of this video, Code Geass has been licensed twice. If you are lucky enough, you can find an old Bandai copy floating around the internet, though getting a hold of both seasons for a decent price might be <laughs> rather difficult. However, it was announced in August of 2013 that Funimation had acquired the rights to the show, though it has not appeared for streaming on their website as of yet, nor has any DVD or Blu-ray release date 
been announced. I am hopeful, however, that they will come out with that soon enough. For alternate anime recommendations, I first point you towards the very obvious Death Note, because it is very similar in narrative, with one guy getting a magical power that he uses to attempt to change the world. However, if you're in more of a mech mood, then I can recommend that you watch Gundam 00. Now, it is very much a Gundam show, so that may dissuade you, but there are enough similarities between this and that that you might find it interesting enough to watch. Between those two, I hope you find something to your liking. And that's it from me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.